Oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Rector of Universitas Negeri Semarang, Profesor Dr. Fatu Rahman, Vice Rectors, Head of Institute, Head and Dean, and Head of Department in Universitas Negeri Semarang. The Honorable Dean Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Universitas Negeri Semarang, Dr. Sugianto, Head of Integrated Science Department, Mrs. Novi Ratnadewi MPD, Committee Chairperson, Mrs. Andin Vita Amalia, MSc, Distinguished Speakers, Associate Professor Dr. Piarat Bunsoeng from Prince of Songkla University, Thailand, and Dr. Ing Sudarno, ST MSc from Universitas Diponegoro. Our host, Riva Atunisa, PhD, and especially distinguished participants from overseas from Thailand, Sudan, Japan, and Malaysia. And also the participants from Indonesia, from Sumatra, Jawa, Kalimantan, Sulawesi, Bali, Nusa Tenggara, Maluku, and Papua. On behalf of the organizer, we wish you to extend our warm welcome to Environmental and Science Education Webinar Series 2, organized by Integrated Science Department. And our speakers today will share the theme of improvement of industrial wastewater treatment system solution through to global challenge. For your information, we have 200 participants with Zoom, joining with Zoom. And I'd like to say also hi to participants who join or watch this webinar via YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have two sessions. The first is opening and second is the presentation from our invited speakers. Before starting the presentation, we would like to hear the welcome speech from the comedy chairperson and Dean. To begin with, I would like to invite chairperson, com chairperson comedy. Please welcome Mrs. Andin Vita Amalia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Rector Universitas Negeri Semarang, Professor Dr. Fatpur Rahman M. Hum, Vice Rectors, Head in, of Institutes, Deans in Universitas Negeri Semarang. The Honorable Dean Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Universitas Negeri Semarang, Dr. Sugianto MSI. Head of Integrated Science Department, Mrs. Novi Ratnadewi, MPD. The Honorable Invited Speakers, Associate Professor Dr. Biarat Bunsoeng from Prince of Songkle University, Thailand. Dr. In Sudarno, STMSC from Universitas Diponegoro and also to all of the participants. Good morning. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Environmental and Science Education International Webinar Series 2. Today's webinar topics, improvement of industrial wastewater treatment system solution to global challenges. And it will focus on two main presentation of utilization of industrial wastewater for production of bioproducts with the zero waste approach. And then optimization of wastewater treatment process to reduce greenhouse gas emission. The aim of this webinar is to facilitate scientific discussion related to environmental biotechnology technology between researchers, practitioners, lecturers, teachers, university students, and environment observers. Ladies and gentlemen, 
In this opportunity, I would like to thank you, the committee and IT team from UNES, Environmental and Science Education International Webinar Series 2, form the best cooperation and hard work to prepare this webinar. Second, keynote speaker for the willingness and time to contribute by sharing information and knowledge. Department of Integrated Science, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science and Universitas Negeri Semarang for giving us facility to conduct this webinar. And especially to all the participants of this webinar. The total number of registration requests to join our Zoom webinar was 1,283 participants coming from overseas country, Thailand, Malaysia, Japan, India, Sudan, and 217 cities and district of Indonesia. But we are sorry not all that the seat is limited. Nevertheless, you can keep attending the webinar via YouTube streaming on the link that we have shared. I certainly hope you will enjoy today of sharing the knowledge. And I personally apologize if I may deliver an appropriate speech. Finally, thank you very much for your big enthusiasm to join our webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for Mrs. Andin. And now I would like to invite Dean Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Dr. Sugianto, to give his welcoming speech. Sir, floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Honorable Rector of Universitas Negeri Semarang, Professor Dr. Fatur Rahman Mum, Dean and Vice Dean and Head of Department in Universitas Negeri Semarang, Distinguished Speakers, Associate Professor Dr. Piarat Bonsawang from Prince of Songkla University, Thailand, Dr. Ing Sudarno, STMSC from Universitas Diponegoro, Indonesia, and distinguished participants from overseas countries and provinces in Indonesia. I extend, I extend to you all our warmest Welcome to Environmental and Science Education International Webinar Series Number Two, hosted by Department of Integrated Science, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Improvement of industrial wastewater treatment system, solution to global challenges, is the webinar them will be dig deeper into the environmental biotechnology areas, especially zero waste management. It is expected that we can gain the insight of the discussion topic from the presentation of the invited speakers and sharing session with the participants. For this reason, we would like to thank the three keynote speakers. Professor, Associate Professor Piarat Bonsawang, she will deliver utilization of industrial water, wastewater for production of bioproduct with the zero waste approach. Dr. Ng Sutarno, STMSC, he will deliver optimization of wastewater treatment processes to reduce. Member of the recognizing committee have been working very hard. I would like to thank them for their dedication 
time and effort. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for your presence and participation and you are the very important part of this webinar success. According to participant registered data, there are a total of 1,283 participants consisting the 217 cities from Indonesia and seven participants from outside Indonesia. They come from Japan, Thailand, Khartoum, Sudan, Sabah, Malaysia, and India. Once again, thank you all for participating in this webinar. The last let's, uh, webinar will be opened by Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir, for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move to the next session, I'd like to share an information. We will share the link for attendance record and it will be shared in the chat. And please do not forget to fill in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to have the main session. This session will be guided by Rifa Atonisa, PhD. And allow me to read the curriculum feature of the moderator. Rifa Atonisa was born in Samarang. She finished her study in Bogor Agricultural University and finish her master degree and doctoral degree in Hokkaido University. She also published some journals or publication in uh, international journal. So that was the curriculum feature for our moderator. Now uh, I'd like to give this session to Ms. Rifa Atonisa. This session is totally yours. Thank you, Ms. Stephanie. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Good morning all. The Honorable Rector of Universitas Negeri Semarang, Professor Dr. Fatur Rahman M. Hum. The Honorable Dean of Faculty Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Universitas Negeri Semarang, Dr. Sugianto MSI. The Honorable Head of Integrated Science, Universitas Negeri Semarang, Ibu Novi Ratna Dewi. SSEMPD, the Honorable Committee Chairman of this international webinar series, Ibu Andin Vita Amalia, MSJ, and also welcome to all the participants who joined in this seminar. And nowadays, we cannot deny that rapid population in the world is giving a serious problems to our environment, especially in industrial, day by day, the number of wastage increased per capita. So what we need, we need a solution against the global challenges. And today, we are pleased to welcome our special guest speakers who has excellent expertise in this issue and welcome Associate Professor Dr. Piarat Bun Soeng from Thailand and Dr. Ing Sudarno STMSJ from Indonesia. And before we start, I'll give some announcements. Question and answer session will be held after all the speakers finish delivering their presentation. And if you have any question during the presentation, you could write the question on the chat box and deliver to me, to the moderator. And if you is asking question to the specific speaker, please mention the name of the speakers and on your question. And also you could write the question in English or in Bahasa Indonesia, and we will help to translate and deliver to the speakers. So we uh, now can begin. Our first speaker in our list is Associate Professor Dr. Iarat Bon Soeng. May I briefly introduce to you our first guest speaker. Dr. Piarat now is acting head of department in Industrial Biotechnology Faculty of Agro-Industry at Prince of Songkla University, Thailand. She was graduated from Food Technology and Biotechnology at Chulalongkorn University in Thailand for bachelor degree and a got Master of Science in Biotechnology also at 
Chulalongkorn University in Thailand and got PhD in chemical engineering at Texas A&M University in USA. Her research interests are environmental biotechnology, wastewater and waste utilization, biogas production and anaerobic digestion, bioethanol from lignocellulosic materials, and biopolymer production produced from microorganisms. And many publications have been published in the many reputable journals. And now uh, she will be sharing with us her expert opinion on industrial wastewater for bioproduction with the zero waste approach. And Dr. Piarat, hello. So are you ready for giving the presentation, Dr. Piarat? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, yes. Good morning, uh -huh. all. Yeah. Uh, may I share the screen? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a great honor to uh, us having you as a speaker in our web seminar. And Dr. Piarat, you have uh, 30 minutes to deliver your presentation. So please. Uh, anyone see my screen? Yes, anyone? clearly okay. seen. Yeah. Uh, thank you for in introduction. Um, before we, I start, I would like to introduce my university, Prince of Songkha University, PSU. Uh, PSU is the first university in Southern Thailand, established in 1967. Uh, university consists of five campus in uh, Sulatani Province, Phuket, France, Patani, and Hat Yai. Uh, Department of Industrial Biotechnology, uh, Faculty of Agro Industry, PSU, located in the Hat Yai campus. Actually, it's about 30 kilometers uh, from the border between Malaysia and uh, Thailand. My talk today is uh, I will focus on the uh, the management of the waste wastewater uh, and residue from the palm oil mill, uh, palm oil mill industry, uh, which is the uh, main economic sector in the southern of Thailand, and also I think it's the main uh, economic sector in the Asian uh, Southeast Asian country. If you can see that the global palm oil productions. Uh, had increased uh, every year until 2019. I think I believe that everyone know that the last year EU uh, voted to ban the to use the palm oil. So I think it's uh, a little bit decreased in the 2009 uh, last year. But anyway, you can see that it's still high. It's about uh, 72. Uh, cubic made last year. And the uh, Indonesia and Malaysia is the highest producer of uh, the palm oil production. I think it's about 57.4 and 26.8% uh, for the production of the palm oil. Actually, Thailand is the third, but you know, it's quite low, about just 4%. Uh, the palm oil production. Uh, during the palm oil meal process, especially the wet process, uh, the, it generates the liquid waste and solid waste. The liquid waste uh, come from sterilizer, sterilizer condensates, hydrocycle wastewater, and calification wastewater. You can see that mostly is from the calification step. For the solid waste, which are palm empty food bunch, palm paste fiber, palm kernel shells, palm kernel cake, and decanter cake. The palm empty food bunch and decanter cake is quite a lot, I mean, compared with the other waste. And uh, is uh, not used uh, for produce something else. And mostly it's for the fertilizer. Um, the palm empty food bunch, uh, some can some company use to produce the electricity also. And if you look at the characteristic of the wastewater from palm oil new process, you can see this contain 
high organic content, especially the oil and grease uh, uh, content is quite high, and the pH is acidic pH. Um, so in Thailand, they adopt uh, the industry mostly adopt the anaerobic wastewater treatment for the treat of the palm oil wastewater. Already, most of them is adopt the anaerobic wastewater treatment because it's the is low uh, operating cost and also the biogas recovery. <clears throat> in Thailand, uh, they produce the CPO about, in this company, uh, just one company that is a case study in Thailand, produce a CPO about 500 to 700 uh, cubic meters per day. They can produce the biogas production about 15 thousand to 40,000 cubic meters per day. So anyway, <clears throat> the FN of the biogas reactor from the company that already uh, established the biogas tank already, but the FN, you can see that the COD is still high and uh, that it cannot discharge into the liver so it is good uh, to uh, apply the zero waste to use this wastewater for producing something, something else. Uh, in my research, I try to use this uh, FN of the biogas tank co-digest with the decanter cake that is the solid waste in the company also. Uh, use the CSTR as the reactor to for, uh, for the anaerobic digestion at the HRT about 15 days. And the results show that uh, the supplement of the decanter cake at 2, 4, 6, and 8%. We found that at 8%, the acid accumulation is quite high. And you can see in the purple line here, the system is failed because it's may, maybe it's too high, too, too high organic loading in the system. Uh, the pH lower than six, about 36 days after the operations. Um, for the biogas productions, you can see that uh, when you supplement with the higher uh, decanter cake from 2%, 4%, and to 6%, you can, you, you can get more higher biogas productions. But for the uh, supplement with the TS of the decanter cake about 8%, the biogas is decreased rapidly. And for the COD removal from uh, uh, the system for all of the experiment is about 70 to 80% removal. Um, so you can see that in this experiment, the decanter cake of the about 6% of the total solid, or we can calculate and found that is about organic loading rate of the 3.4 gram VS per lit per day. It's the optimum condition to give the high, uh, high of the biogas productivity, productivity about the 6.6 .6 lit per day. So another, uh, uh, I, I, I study more in this topic by using comparison the single state system and two state system. The two state system in theory is found that uh, the two state system is the separation of the two tank. The first tank is the acid forming bacteria to produce uh, acid and uh, provide the acid for the second uh, tank for the methane production uh, bacteria. So this system 
uh, it uh, report that um, help for the uh, stability, efficiency, uh, and uh, can give more, mostly it could give more high biogas production. So the, in this experiment, I compare the two, one, one system and two system. For the two system, use a CSTR for two tanks. One is the uh, two liter of CSTR, another is a CS, uh, five liter of the CSTR. And uh, operate uh, the similar to the uh, the single system at the HRT of 10, 15, and 20 HRT. In this uh, experiment, I study the ratio of HRT between the acid tank and methane tank. This is the operation uh, volume. Uh, for each set of the experiment. Um, the results show that um, at the HRT 10, 10 days, you can see that uh, at the ratio of the 0 0.40, it means that uh, HRT of the first tank, the acid tank is three days and the uh, Second tank is the uh, seven days here. Yeah. Give the high, the methane content and methane production. And uh, compare with the single state, you can see that the single state at the HRT 10 days, the pH is 5.9, is decreased, and the system uh, give very low uh, content of the methane content because of the system is too much, too high organic content. So that uh, is, uh, the system is failed. So from this uh, experiment, you can see that if you use the single uh, system, you have to use higher, longer HRT. So in this system is the 15 days is uh, optimum for the uh, single system. But if you use the two system, you can use the shorter HRT. But for the uh, HRT of 15 days and 20 days, you can see that the uh, two state is not benefit if you use longer HRT. So the uh, in conclusion, it means that uh, the, if you use the uh, two state is benefit if you use the shorter HRT. Yeah. This is quite is a uh, is a feature for the conclusion of this experiment. Uh, if you use the uh, HRT ten days, you can give uh, the biogas about one point one lit per lit of the wastewater per day, and the FN from the COD can be decreased about. 300 to 500 milligram per liter. Actually, it's still not, cannot discharge into the water. In the palm, the, the palm oil meal, waste water, mostly is the, uh, the color is brown. So it cannot discharge to waste water, uh, to the river anyway. So, but it, you can use as the fertilizer. In the next uh, approach that, uh, I would like to present here is the other uh, bioproducts. Uh, you can use the wastewater to produce uh, like a biopolymer and biodiesel. In this experiment, I use the uh, bacteria, Lumenobacillus pinus, to produce the uh, polyhydroxyalkanoin. Polyhydroxyalkanoase or PHA is uh, mostly uh, is a biopolymer, but uh, most of the research interest to study the short chain uh, link uh, PHA, such as the PHB, PHV, or PHBV. 
But in this research, I interest to study the medium range of the PHA uh, because of the property is uh, will better or close to the uh, the biopoly but the polymer from the phytochemy. Uh, the bacteria stain PSA I isolate from the uh, palm oil uh, wastewater by my student in 2012. This type of the uh, bacteria can produce the PHA as the intracellular product inside the cells. Uh, this is the scope of this work. Uh, firstly, I study about the optimization to produce the cell and the PHA using the less fun surface methodology. And uh, next, uh, I scale up to the from one liter to seven, uh, to actually it's 70, 70, 72 lit per liter, but the working volume about 60, 60 lit. And then it's the uh, how is the sales to produce the biopolymer and bio cell. Actually the, the wastewater after harvesting the bacteria, we can also use as the biogas production. This is a zero approach, zero waste approach. Uh, the first uh, experiment, I compare the waste, the, the substrate to cultivate the TSA by using the palm oil uh, wastewater, palm oil methane, and the uh, the effluent from the biogas tank is found that the, the PHA from the wastewater is gave a higher PHA than the, uh, the wastewater from the effluent of the biogas tank because of the higher COD or higher the organic content. And also found that uh, the PHA Composition is the ter polymer PHA contain three of the P of the unit of the hydroxy butylate, hydroxy valate, and uh, hydroxy hexanoate. So you can see that uh, the C6 uh, is you can count as the uh, medium chain uh, range of the PHA. And, and this slide is show that they can consume most of the uh, the acid, including the wild high fatty acid and long chain fatty acid. They consume a lot of the palmitic acid. Next, I study using the less fun surface methodology to find the optimum condition to to cultivate of the TSA for producing the PHA. It found that uh, the, 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 the factor that I study is the uh, C to N ratio, aleration rate and phosphorus addition. It found that the optimum condition is at the C to N ratio of 10, the aleration rate of one VVM and the Phosphorus addition at the 2.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.1 uh, camper lead. And uh, the cell, dye cell rate is about 2.85 camper lead and the PHA about 2.64 camper lead. Uh, after that, I scale up to the 60 lead working volume and see the composition of the, the PHA inside the cell. Uh, you can see that mostly is contained of uh, the C6 uh, unit. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, after I extract uh, the polymer from the cell, after I extract polymer from the cell, I also found that inside the cell they accumulate the oleic acid as the the oil inside the the the, the inside the cells. After that uh, 
I study, analyze the properties of the, the polymer. You can see that the elongation at break is about 9.74 is better than the single length uh, the, the single the, the single range uh, PHA uh, at the top, sorry I short range the PHA but that uh, is close to the PS and for the uh, tensile and the melting time is close to the uh, PP yeah. so I think it's pop up is potent it has potential to use as the bioplastic yeah, as the alternative source in, uh, uh, substitute the bioplastic from the petrochemy. And also I use the uh, PHA to produce the methyl ester as the biodiesel. And it's found that the property of the methyl ester produced from TSA is uh, According to the Thailand, the regulation at ASTM is, is acceptable, except the color. You can see the color if I produce from the TSS, the material ester is quite dark com compared with the commercial material ester. So, in conclusion, for global challenge, I think it's, uh, proper, it's possible to use the, uh, the pseudo waste approach. This one can increase in the first research, you can see that you can increase the well gas production from the coordination with the FN of well gas tank and the decanter cake. Decanter cake actually is, uh, have high nitrogen and potassium. So after the biogas production, the solid can be used as the fertilizer. And also the wastewater from the palm oil industry can also produce the value products such as the biopolymer bio and biodiesel. So I think it's this approach, you don't have to throw away any waste and it's gonna be sustainability for the environmental friendly also. I think it's, that's all for my presentation. If you have any questions, so maybe we can discuss later. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Piarat, for that very insightful presentation. And indeed, we need a such improvement of industrial by the increasing the production of bio, uh, biogas uh, treatment, such as uh, that technology as a solution to uh, the global challenge and moving forward uh, we will listen the next uh, guest speaker dr in sudarno stmsj and dr sudarno now is a secretary of environmental science for doctoral program at universitas diponegoro in indonesia his expertise are in chemical engineering and also environmental engineering and also many publications have been published in many reputable journals and now he will present the topic of optimization wastewater treatment to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And Dr. Sudarno, hello, are you ready to present your presentation? Dr. Sudarno? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yes. We are pleased having you as a speaker in our web seminar. And Dr. Sudarno, you have uh, 30 minutes to deliver your presentation. And please. Good morning. Uh, please, uh, can you share my presentation? I already sent to committee. Yes. This is Bapak Sudarno. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep. Okay. Can I start it? Uh, first, the Honorable Rector, Prof. Fatu Rahman the Honorable Dean of several faculty of uh, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Uh, good morning, selamat uh, pagi Pak Rektor, Pak Dekan, and also uh, good morning everyone. Thank you very much uh, to join in my presentation. 
Uh, yeah, today I would like to present result of uh, my research, also my interested with title optimization of wastewater treatment process to reduce greenhouse gas, uh, gas emission. Next, please. Yes, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, as we know that the increasing rate of greenhouse gases emissions believed to be the main cause of uh, global climate change and has led to the formation of many international agreements to control of the generation of gas house, uh, uh, green, greenhouse gases. And also we know that the one of uh, human activity, uh, it is a wastewater treatment plants, consume energy and uh, come out one of the industrial source of uh, gas, uh, greenhouse gas production, which have to the potential produ produce CO2, methane, and also nitrous oxide. And we also know that, know that the source of greenhouse gases generation in wastewater treatment is uh, include a variety of biological and also uh, 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 biochemical treatment process, also energy generation, uh, protection, and also transportation of material for on-site use. Next, please. Yeah, if we can see in this uh, graph, uh, actually with water treatment plant is, are responsible for the about 4% of greenhouse gas emission uh, globally. Countries also uh, Indonesia will need to consider many different ways to cut emission in order to meet their obligation under the Paris Climate uh, Agreement. And uh, if we take a look at the methane gas in the, uh, uh, the other uh, picture, we can see that the solid waste and uh, wastewater treatment plants are responsible for about 17% of methane gas emission globally. This is a uh, significant uh, amount. And also we can see that the nitrous oxide of waste management are responsible for about 4% of N2O emission globally. Next, please. Uh, from this picture, we can see that the, the key greenhouse gas, no, uh, yeah, we can see that the key greenhouse gas due to the anthropogenic activity is uh, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, methane, and N2O. And according to IPCC, CO2 is a uh, constitute about uh, 80% from fossil fuel and my 10 is about uh, 15 and the rest is uh, nitrogen oxide N2O. Uh, if we measure about the greenhouse gases, we should remember that about the global warming potential because the different cases is different uh, global warming potential. We can see that the actually uh, nitrogen oxide is more than 300 kilogram equivalent compared to the carbon dioxide. And the uh, methane is about 20% uh, compared to the carbon dioxide. So that is important to take, for example, the N2O emission to the account because uh, nitrogen oxides have the more and more times uh, impact uh, compared to the other uh, greenhouse gases. Next, please. Yeah, if we talk about the wastewater treatment plants, uh, the emission, greenhouse gases emissions uh, come from the two uh, points. The first is direct em uh, emission and the other is indirect emission. 
the direct emission is uh, come from the comprising uh, of CO2 due to the degradation organic matter, emission of N2O during the process nitrification, denitrification, and also uh, methane and N2O come from the anaerobic uh, digestion, especially for the slot uh, treatment. Whereas indirect uh, emission can be slot treatment, can be electrical power using, also uh, can, uh, can, can be for during uh, maintenance and also operation. So uh, there are two uh, emissions. First is direct and the second is indirect uh, emission. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, we talked the first the first uh, greenhouse gases. It is it is uh, carbon dioxide, uh, and the wastewater treatment carbon dioxide uh, generate from the oxidation of organic material. Uh, we as we know that the during microorganism oxide oxidize uh, organic compounds aerobically, carbon dioxide is produced as this equation. PUD plus uh, O2 also nutrient, and then we uh, produce uh, CO2, green, greenhouse gases. Actually, not in the aerobic process. Uh, during an aerobic process, also produce CO2 in wastewater treatment. Uh, next, please. Uh, for the direct greenhouse gases emission also come from the anaerobic process. Uh, methane, methane gas is usually produced under anaerobic uh, condition during organic matter decomposition. And uh, there are uh, four steps uh, during the anaerobic uh, wastewater treatment. The first is hydrolysis, acetogenesis, acetogenesis, and the last is meta methanogenesis. That will be produced not only methane, but also carbon dioxide. Next, please. Now we take a look about the nitrogen, nitrous oxide, N2O. Where come from the N2O, actually? The N2O emitted is generated by nitrification and denitrification process. Yeah. Uh, in the field, we <coughs> many industrial uh, wastewater treatment contain the ammonium, and ammonium is mm, one of the uh, uh, pollutant in uh, surface water, so we sh we should uh, reduce the uh, reduce the ammonium uh, using the nitrification, also the nitrification. Uh, nitrification is an aerobic process during ammonia are convert into the nitrates and also nitrates, whereas the denitrification is the process under an anoxic condition in which the nitrate is converted into the nitrates NO2 again and back to the nitrogen gas N2. In the, picture, in the figure, we can see that the, uh, in the red cycle, it says the N2O. So during the nitrification, N2O is, uh, pro, uh, is uh, produced, not only during nitrification, but also uh, during the nitrification. Um, so we should uh, 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 make an effort in the nitrification, also the nitrification, so that the N2O is not uh, produced. Next, please. As I mentioned, be, uh, mentioned before earlier, that's uh, there are also uh, greenhouse gas in wastewater treatment uh, come from the indirect, uh, like in the figure, uh, the indirect greenhouse gas come from the uh, generation, electrical generation, come from the transportation of energy, electricity, sometimes is uh, chemical for on-site use and also uh, greenhouse gas come from during uh, biosolid transport. 
uh, yeah, this is also the huge amount compared compared with the direct greenhouse gas. Uh, actually, the indirect uh, greenhouse gas about 40% uh, of the overall greenhouse in the wastewater treatment. But uh, in this presentation, uh, I will focus uh, in the direct uh, greenhouse gas emission. Next, please. Okay. Uh, the question is uh, from which units in the wastewater treatment plant actually greenhouse uh, gas are produced? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, generally, the wastewater treatment plant include this unit operation. This is the conventional uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, especially for the domestic uh, wastewater treatment. Uh, so this is the preliminary treatment, such as communicate, uh, communitor, screening, grid removal, and then sometimes we need a flow equalization, and then primary treatment using primary clarification, and then secondary treatment. Secondary treatment mainly using biological processes. In the figure, the biological processes are anoxic, uh, oxic uh, treatment. And then secondary clarifier, and uh, when the nitric, uh, when the <laughs> in the wastewater treatment have the mu uh, uh, high the nitrogen com uh, nitrogen concentration, and then the in the wastewater treatment plant needs the nitrogen removal plants. And the last, uh, we uh, in the uh, uh, we also need the solid treatment. Uh, in the future, the solid treatment come from the. Uh, primary treatment uh, also come from the um, uh, slot of the clarifier. So actually, this is uh, 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 greenhouse gas come from in many many unit uh, plant in wastewater treatment. Uh, this is uh, uh, CO two and then uh, methane, also the N two O. The the gas can produce uh, during the uh, its uh, its uh, plants. Next, please. Another wastewater treatment plant system, as uh, for example, here is nitrification and also denitrification. In all unit also produce uh, greenhouse gases. Yeah. We can see uh, noxic treatment, aerobic treatment produce mainly CO2 and N2O, whereas slot treatment produce CO2 and methane. Also in the future, uh, 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 the greenhouse gas from indirect activities such pumping heating power is uh, sound. Next, please. Yeah, this is a uh, next step. So, in principle, there are three ways to reduce this uh, greenhouse gas from the wastewater treatment. So, the first is uh, minimization, yeah. and the second is treatment, and the third is prevention. We can minimize. Uh, I, I I will um, explain the later in detail. We can minimize the production of greenhouse gas throughout the changing operating condition for the wastewater treatment. And uh, for the um, uh, treatment, I mean, uh, sometimes the gas protection, uh, uh, sometimes we cannot avoid the formation of this greenhouse gas. In this case, we should treat this gas. Yeah. And what, then, what can we do for the greenhouse gas that have already formed? Theoretically, we can capture it and then uh, treat it. I also, uh, uh, we will discuss later in detail. And the last is also uh, prevention uh, by applying new configuration and also process to remove organic uh, matter. So there are uh, three steps, uh, three, uh, three, three ways. The first is minimization, treat, uh, treatment, and prevention. Next, please. Yeah, uh, actually, for the minimization, uh, 
greenhouse gas in current wastewater treatment plant to modify the operational condition of existing unit uh, is most economical way to decrease N2O and carbon dioxide emission. We thought uh, we thought the deterioration effluent quality. Next, please. So, uh, in the link side, the small uh, the small picture. Actually, this is conventional um, conventional uh, wastewater treatment plants I uh, saw before, and uh, uh, in activated sludge wastewater treatment, uh, carbon dioxide is produced uh, the most in uh, biological treatment, and especially in the uh, activated sludge. When we talk about the activated sludge. The most important for the um, uh, uh, control for the control the greenhouse protection is the slot retention time uh, in the wastewater treatment. Uh, so uh, the operation of the activated slot system at high values of the SRT SRT will promote respiration of biomass, which increase the amount of CO2 oxidized to CO2. So when we uh, we when we reduce the SRT and then uh, 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 and then the concentration of this uh, slot will reduce and uh, the amount of the CO2 oxidized also the reduce uh, and then the production production CO2 also uh, decrease. However, we should. Um, uh, make account about the uh, effluent quality. So we can uh, reduce the uh, SRT, but we should uh, maintain the effluent quality uh, still uh, still good. Yeah. Next, please. For the uh, methane emission, can be minimized. Uh, we will we will con, uh, we will focus on the uh, tightening slot, so, yeah, and we can uh, minimize the methane uh, gas in the wastewater treatment when we can cover cover the tanks to avoid gas leakage and their emission and then uh, capture uh, before the burn with the excess biogas in source. So. Um, uh, this is important to uh, capture the uh, methane uh, because uh, methane is uh, have uh, higher uh, higher uh, higher impact for the uh, greenhouse gas. Next, and the other gas is uh, N2O uh, gas. And the main factor influencing N2O emission in nitrification and denitrification reactor is dissolved oxygen. So dissolved oxygen is uh, uh, also the key uh, factor for the uh, greenhouse gas uh, controlling. Yeah. Uh, so we can actually we can minimize the N2O protection in nitrification. Uh, so the system should be at low O2 and the high nitrate accumulation. To make it so we can operate at low aeration and CN ratio to get low. Yeah, so in the nitrification reactor, we maintain low aeration and also the CN ratio to get low. And for the, uh, the nitrification, we can minimize N2O, nitrous oxide, by maintaining high oxygen uh, O2. So this is the opposite. And the nitrification should, uh, low, uh, should low, low dissolved oxygen, but the, in denitrification, uh, 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 a little bit high oxygen. Of course, this is, we should remember that, that the denitrification actually is anaerobic. Uh, an aerobic uh, uh, reactor. Please, next. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, sometimes we cannot avoid the formation of this greenhouse gas. Uh, so what can we do for the greenhouse gas that have already formed? Theoretically, we can capture it and then uh, treat it. Yeah. However, uh, for the treatment of the gas uh, green gas house, not minimize, but for the treating, uh, this is a difficult option because uh, this is the high capital cost of system. But, uh, theor but theoretically, we can do it. Uh, this next. Yeah. Uh, CO2 uh, can capture by solid absorbent is considered one of the promising technology for carbon capture. So, uh, yeah, uh, using the absorbent, solid absorbent or the liquid absorbent, uh, many, st many study uh, try to uh, apply the CO2 uh, uh, gas. However, the, the, like I mentioned before, also the application of this technology is uh, uh, associated with the high capital cost. Next, please. Uh, yeah, as we know, this is also uh, in common in the fields. We burning uh, methane gas using the uh, 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 gas oxygen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, several biological process uh, capable of oxidizing methane into CO2. Yeah. So one one mole uh, uh, one mole uh, one mole methane produce one mole uh, carbon dioxide. Like uh, like in this equation, we can see here uh, uh, three methane can oxidize into three carbon dioxide using the nitrate as electron. And also the five methane is oxidized into the five carbon dioxide using nitrates as electron acceptor. Uh, um, special, uh, specific bacteria and also RH can uh, uh, can uh, can com can uh, can oxidize uh, uh, like I uh, like in this uh, feature. Next, please. Yeah. Oh, oh. This is also uh, known that the such as uh, selective catalytic reduction. Uh, can be used to control emission nitrogen uh, oxide from the power plant. Uh, but the problem is the uh, for this uh, uh, technology, this is the need the high temperature, also using catalyst. Uh, like uh, in the future, we can see that the N2, N2O can be converted to the N2. And to O can be converted to the gas uh, nitrogen gas by selective catalytic, but it needs uh, temperature uh, condition more than 400 uh, degrees Celsius. That's uh, high um, cost. Next, please. So next is about the prevention. So prevention of the emission of greenhouse gas from wastewater treatment can also be done applying relative new technology. Uh, the technology we can use for the prevention of the greenhouse gas uh, emission in the wastewater treatment is application of microalgae, also can do process, can the process is copper aerobic anoxic nitrous recomposition operation, and we can also use the anamo process. Anamo process is uh, anaerobic ammonium oxidation. Yeah, so the uh, micro microalga using microalga we can remove uh, carbon dioxide. Using candle process we try to convert uh, methane. And use, uh, using the anamo process, we can reduce uh, N2O. 
and uh, uh, detail about this uh, technology uh, we can see in this uh, next uh, uh, slide please okay the alternative system to remove based on microalgae is considered as potential substitute yeah in the link is uh, uh, um, in the link is nitrification system so co2 which produced by heterotroph uh, bacteria yeah actually you actually can be used by nitrifying bacteria however this bacteria need additional oxygen so uh, nitrification bacteria uh, can use uh, can use carbon dioxide but uh, to use the carbon dioxide as um, electron uh, electron source this bacteria need the additional oxygen Compare with the 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 right, the right picture, this is the microalgae system. In the microalgae system, carbon consumption will produce oxygen. Uh, carbon uh, carbon consumption will produce oxygen, and this oxygen will uh, use back by heterotroph bacteria. So we can see that the uh, microalgae can uh, reduce carbon dioxide and also um uh, produce uh, oxygen so this is the have the two uh, advantage uh next next please okay this now is kind of process yeah on oh, the uh, many study uh, about the kind of process to try how to reduce carbon dioxide in the wastewater treatment in principle uh, uh, kind of process is how to how to burning how to burn uh, methane using nitrogen oxide nitrous oxide yeah so kind of uh, kind of process uh, uh, entail three steps the first is part, partial nitrification so the ammonium uh, will oxidize to nitrates and the second one the anoxic reduction nitrates uh, reduct to nitrogen uh, nitrous oxygen using nitrogen nitrous oxygen using n2o uh, we will burn we will oxidize a methane yeah so this is the uh, interesting uh, technology also the kind of process next please the last uh, the last technology is about the anamo process so like uh, like uh, i mentioned before uh, nitrification uh, uh, anamo process is uh, substitute uh, nitrification and denitrification without uh, uh, producing n2o so we can see in the link uh, the left, the left uh, so picture this is the nitrification and the nitrification process, and we can see in the red cycle, uh, cycle red cycling, this is uh, N2O. So nitrification and the nitrification produce N2O, but uh, in the anamo process, the right side, the right figure, um, after after uh, nitrate produce, nitrate will oxidize uh, ammonium directly into the uh, nitrogen gas so in the anamo process uh, n2o will not be uh, produced this is anamo process uh, in principle next please uh, uh, how the application of this technology like uh, microalgae, like uh, candle, like uh, the anamo process applied in the uh, wastewater treatment. So we can see here uh, for the microalgae system, uh, we can uh, up, uh, put the microalgae system in this uh, after clarifier uh, or secondary uh, secondary sedimentation. So we can put the microalga system reactor and the after the clarifier and the activated sludge system was uh, substituted by aerobic reactor to remove organic matter 
and followed by high grade micro microalgae forms. And how to, uh, next please. And uh, how to uh, put the candle process in this uh, wastewater treatment plan uh, because candle process is uh, expected is expected to uh, convert uh, mitem so the candle process put in the uh, slats um, removal yeah uh, in the slat line uh, we use uh, candle process and the candle process uh, produce N2O and this uh, uh, instead of uh, oxygen, uh, nitro, uh, nitrous oxygen will burning to methane directly. Next, please. And for the <coughs> uh, anamok process, this is similar with the microalgae uh, technology. The anamok process can be put after the clarifier. Uh, in the clarifier or the or, or, or after secondary uh, sedimentation like uh, we can see in this uh, 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 red, uh, red uh, circle next please uh, this is a uh, several uh, notes uh, about this how to <coughs> minimize uh, greenhouse gas in the wastewater treatment uh, because actually the concentration of oxygen will affect significantly the process. The formation of methane, carbon dioxide, N2O is uh, by different bacteria is so very dependent on the concentration of oxygen in the wastewater treatment. So the oxygen plays a major influence in this uh, treatment. What we can do is, uh, yeah, we can see here, uh, we make a low concentration to limit the growth of microorganism. Uh, but whereas the little bit high concentration uh, could be influenced the denitrification. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, and especially in uh, the developing country like Indonesia, not so many uh, industry or not many uh, district or not many city uh, can uh, build up the uh, good wastewater treatment plan because uh, uh, wastewater treatment plan uh, completely like activated slat, RPC, oxidation ditch, or other. Uh, technology sometimes is uh, need a uh, high cost. Um, so the constructed wetland, and this is also the attractive, uh, attracting uh, technology for the uh, wastewater treatment plan, especially for the uh, domestic uh, uh, wastewater treatment. So uh, constructed wetland uh, uh, is a natural like system for the wastewater treatment. He can capable remove all both pollutants with the uh, small energy, yeah. And but um, but uh, uh, constructed wetland also produce um, uh, greenhouse gas. There are three, yeah. There are three uh, major group of the uh, constructed wetland: the free water surface flow, horizontal, and also vertical. We can see in the next uh, slide, please. Okay, uh, so in this picture, there are three <coughs> uh, um, constructed wetland. Uh, this is the uh, FWS con uh, constructed wetlands, a shallow silt basin of sequence basin with a water depth of uh, 20 until 40 centimeter, usually more than 50% surface covered by uh, planted and spontaneous vegetation. And the second one is uh, XSSF constructed wetland. Uh, consists of gravel of rock beds, about uh, 60 and 80 uh, centimeter. And the last one is uh, 
FSS FSSF constructed wetland uh, comprise a flatbed uh, graded gravel about 30 until 60. Yeah, and the, the last one, the, the contracted uh, wetland type is intermittently uh, with the large beds. So the flooding, the surface with water uh, gradually percolate uh, down. Yeah. And how about the greenhouse gas produced uh, by the three type of the uh, constructed wetland? We can see in the next step, and the next slide. Sorry, next please. Okay, uh, in this table we can see the relative comparison of greenhouse gas protection from the three wetland system. Uh, so we can see that the, uh, the, the first, the FWS, FWS uh, produce more than carbon dioxide compared to the other. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, the uh, FWS also produce uh, carp, uh, my times uh, more than the other because we can see uh, uh, FWS is uh, have the water and uh, not easy for the oxygen uh, introduced in the water so the in the water condition is anaerobic and in anaerobic the especially especially carbon uh, methane will be produced that's why the uh, FWS uh, have uh, methane more than the other, and uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, in opposite the uh, the FSSF uh, uh, have the uh, oxygen, so they will uh, conduct incomplete denitrification, so they produce N2O more higher than the other. Okay, next please. Okay, so that that what uh, I can present related this topic uh, about the optimization of his water treatment uh, to reduce greenhouse gas uh, emission. Uh, thank you for the uh, attention, and this is on the friend I related. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sudarno, for. Uh, sharing your experience uh, study and those are very insightful and i'm just uh, right for the know that we have to uh, pay attention for the three keys of the process when we have to minimize the production of the case emission that produced by uh, during the worst weather treatment and then uh, prevention also the application of technology uh, such as the application of the microalgae and also can the process you say this is unique uh, technology that can apply to uh, in application to preventing the the, the gas emission and then uh, we already listened uh, to uh, from all the speakers today and so we will proceed to the question and answer session and then okay i already received uh the question privately to me and so the first for uh, dr piarat and this is uh, from uh linda mahardiani so i would like to uh asking you do you want to directly speaking to the speaker or i will deliver to you to uh, asking the question lina mahardiani hello do you tune in in this seminar? Okay, maybe it's not. Uh, so, okay, I will try to deliver uh, her presentation. Uh, this question is for Dr. Piarat. And how do you utilize uh, your biopolymer from your waste water treatment result? And then the second question: Does your uh, waste water treatment process uh, is economically uh, feasible? Okay, thank you. Maybe one by one uh, for the question. Dr. Piarat, uh, you still tune in? Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm. The first question is how to use the biopolymer that I produce mm. for the bio, that, right from the wastewater. Biopolymer, yeah. Uh, right now, I just yeah is in still in the laboratory and uh, normally for the biopolymer, uh, 
as I know, is used as the composite combined with others to produce the bioplastic, but it's not in my lab. So actually, they uh, and uh, they can directly use and com combine with the others uh, polymer. Uh, right now, uh, actually, you if you you can know that the PHB is a short chain uh, range with the PHA is already commercial, uh, once mm. commercial, but it's not economic to use uh, only the PLPHB for the bioplastic. So uh, right now, is you have to combine with others, mm -hmm. uh, such as the uh, polypropylene or something like that to make uh, the cheaper and the, comp uh, the what's it called the properties something like that and the second question I, I'm not sure that this is answer <laughs> your, the, the question or not yes. this is yes, yes maybe, okay yes. for yeah. the second question is the economy I'm not sure that the economy in the part of the the, the, the first uh, research or not, or, or the second list about the PHA. I'm, I'm not sure that the, the question is for the first, if, if you mean that the, uh, the economic for the uh, biogas production, if you use the, sec, uh, the, the FN from the biogas tank, actually, it's, uh, normally it's, uh, it cannot discharge, and you can see that the COD after the anaerobic digestion is still high. You still need to, uh, to, to treatment more system, but uh, uh, even though you use the aerobic or anaerobic process, and, and, but when we add the cancer cake, it can, can be higher biogas productions, and the, after the biogas production, you can use as a biofertilizer. This this one I think is economy, but if you mean the the PHA part, uh, I'm 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 agree that for the the economic part is still not is is not still not economic because it's a mostly the biopolymer from the microorganism microorganism is expensive uh, from two steps is the first is the substrate for our case the substrate is cheap but the second step is a purification mm -hmm. to extract the biopolymer inside the cell so this one is still expensive mm -hmm. we have to find the how how to uh, reduce the price to I don't know how because right now I use chloroform to extract the uh, the polymer from the cell. So mostly the step is still on the laboratory scale, right, Dr. Yes. Piara? Yeah, yes. Uh, actually, the yeah. first the first one yeah, the is, first. Is, is okay, but the, okay the PHEA or biopolymer is still in the lab. Yeah. Okay. And then we also received the question to Dr. Sudarno. This is from Lina Maharyani, is from uh, Universitas, Neg uh, Universitas Negeri Solo. Yeah. Uh, Bless Marat, I'm sorry. And is there any possibility of one step process to eliminate all the gaseous waste like CO2, CO4, and then N2O to reduce the complexity? Means that energy and money of the wastewater treatment. And then the second question How far do you utilize uh, the iron or FA on your uh, wastewater uh, treatment process? Dr. Sudarmo, could you please answer this question? Oh, thank you very much. But uh, in the for the first uh, first uh, question, I didn't uh, 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 hear uh, clearly. Uh, could you please uh, uh, tell more, uh, tell again? Okay. The Is there one? any possibility of one step process to eliminate all the gas house waste? like CO2, CH4, and N2O to reduce the complexity. It's like the energy and the money of the wastewater treatment. Okay, thank yeah. you very, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, 
एक्चुअल देर आर टू देर आर टू प्रिंसिप वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट द फर्स्ट इज आयरोपिक ट्रीटमेंट एंड द सेकंड इज अन एरोपिक अन एरोपिक ट्रीटमेंट सो दिस इज द ऑपोसाइड सो इस इज टू Uh, when we and when we we reduce, for example, for the carbon dioxide and also N two O, what we can do is uh, uh, we using the uh, we we use this uh, aerobic reactor, and for the uh, methane reduction, so we use the uh, anaerobic reactor. So uh, uh, as far as I know. There are should uh, at least two reactor to reduce the the the, the uh, greenhouse gases in this water treatment, and uh, and for the the second uh, second uh, question is about the ferro. Uh, okay, yes, ferro. Yes, ferro. Yes. How far do you utilize ferro in your uh, wastewater process? Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, what I present uh, before is uh, uh, more than about the uh, domestic wastewater treatment, and domestic wastewater treatment is uh, contain uh, less the ferro, yeah. Uh, 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 but in industry, in, in industry, or when we uh, talking about the water treatment, the ferro is uh, higher, and how to to uh, to uh, uh, treat the which water uh, content the ferro actually the first there should be the pre uh, pre uh, pre treatment so before the the biological uh, biological uh, process will be applied the ferro ferro should be uh, removed first because uh, in the higher concentration the ferro will be uh, inhib uh, will be inhibited the biological process uh, uh, yeah to the uh, reduced ferro we can so we, we can see we can use the uh, several technology like uh, aeration or uh, uh, coagulation flocculation and etc uh, hopefully this uh, my answer can Uh, give a uh, uh, answer. Okay, and then the second uh, question, uh, Dr. Sudarmo, and this is privately uh, privately to me. And what catalyst that you use for the wastewater treatment, and how to apply the catalyst, and how to count the doses of the catalyst? From Dolti Melia Wanga Putri, thank you for the question. Yeah, uh, is that secret? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope it's not secret recipe. Yeah, thank you very much. This, uh, uh, <laughs> Difficult question. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, what the the putri is uh, mean is catalyst for the uh, nitrogen oxide removal. Yeah, uh, um, for the domestic wastewater treatment, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the the the, the nitrogen oxide is. Uh, uh, I, I mean. The catalyst, uh, the catalyst, usually used for the uh, flue gas from the uh, power plant. So, so for from the uh, 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 power plant for the PLTU uh, in Bahasa. So, in uh, in the uh, gas from the uh, power plant is uh, uh, contain the nitrate is higher. Uh, to uh, to remove the high net uh, na uh, 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 nitrogen gas from the flue gas can you be catalyst but yeah uh, theoretists we can use the uh, PT PT plantium to for the catalyst but yeah like I mentioned uh, in the presentation this is uh, about the cost and yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, we already received to uh, the question from Amar Sharaf Hoyer, and then he like to directly asking to the speaker. Hello, Amar Sharif Hoyer. Uh, do you tune in? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. You can. You can directly asking to the speaker, please. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks all. Uh, yes. Hello. Can you hear me yes. well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, exactly. I would like to um, express my sense of gratitude. Thanks all uh, the speaker. Thank you for your kind scientific contribution that making sure we are we are where and we are today. And um, actually, and I also would like to uh, thanks all uh, the participants uh, from uh, via uh, uh, Zoom. Uh, so just uh, actually wastewater is like being a major challenge the population today and um, actually also all the universe has uh, a concern or confusing about these uh, issues. And uh, just actually I have only one question for Professor Sodarno regarding with uh, direct emissions from the greenhouse gas emissions uh, that uh, affected by the uh, domestic waste. Uh, the question is in which process can the domestic waste like generate uh, green uh, green uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the second question uh, also in the sterile wastewater uh, produce like uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, the question is in which process the industrial um, wastewater treatment generate uh, greenhouse gas emissions and also if we compare uh, the, I mean, uh, the amount, let's say, or capacity of the greenhouse emissions uh, between the domestic waste and industrial waste, uh, which one is highest? Thank you. Thank you, Amar, for your uh, question. And please, Dr. Sudarma, to answer. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. This is a good question uh, for, from the Amar Saraf Khair. Thank you. And uh, uh, maybe in the, my uh, my uh, question can give answer for the uh, all your question. Yeah. So the uh, as long as the wastewater treatment contain the uh, organic compounds, yeah. As long as the with water treatment contain uh, the organic compounds, uh, then the yeah. the the wastewater the, the organic compound will produce either carbon dioxide or methane or nit uh, or nitrous oxide. This is depend on the what technology we use. If we use the uh, aerobic uh, technology, and then the most of them is carbon dioxide will produce. If if we use the uh, anaerobic uh, technology, and then the most of them produce the methane. Uh, so either uh, domestic wastewater treatment or the industrial wastewater treatment, as long as the 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 the, the wastewater treatment contain the uh, uh, organic compound, they will be uh, contributes for the uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, so uh, that's 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 the principle, uh, Amar. So, uh, uh, of course, we should uh, um, uh, we should uh, consider that the um, uh, norm, uh, in uh, in general the wastewater uh, industrial wastewater industrial wastewater. Uh, sometimes contain the, uh, the, the uh, inhibitor uh, inhibitor uh, reaction. Uh, this is not sometimes this is uh, difficult to treat the wastewater uh, in the, uh, industry uh, industry wastewater using the uh, biological uh, technology. That's all. Ahmad. Is that clear, uh, Ahmad uh, Amar? Uh, the answer from Dr. Sudarno. Is this okay? Hello, Amar. 
Okay, so it's, it's, it's no problem. Okay, and then uh, the next question uh, is from student. Is there any uh, Fitri you would like to directly asking to the speaker for the question? Fitri, hello Fitri. Do you tune in? Hello? Okay, still waiting and then uh, because uh, she wants to directly ask to the speaker. So uh, it's like for me, uh, the question to Dr. Piarat and then Dr. Sudarmo, this is quite um, very unique uh, technology that for me as a bio, uh, microbiologist, so uh, utilization of the microbes. So it's, it's like long, long step to implement that microbes. Like, so first, like uh, we have to collect isolate the microbes and then characterize and then screening and process and we should implement. So uh, my question, how you find, I mean, the, the, the best uh, isolate for the microorganism that you, you used for your study is like uh, Dr. Piarat, uh, maybe it's like using a specific microbes or using a commercial microbes or is there any consortium or so uh, could you uh, give us uh, like the clue, uh, how, uh, what kind of the isolate can be used to, uh, in a converse to uh, the the products, so the products become a zero waste. And then also, Dr. Sudarma, I would like to asking as a, like a microbiologist aspect. Dr. Piarat, hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you mean that the PHA that how yeah. I isolate and yeah. Screen? Yes. Uh, actually, I isolate from the uh, palm oil wastewater, mm. and then <clears throat> I'm looking for the use the Sudan back to see under the my, my under the microscope that which one is the uh, accommodate the oil mm. inside mm. and choose the that uh, that's the like a skin, uh, the primary skinning and then culture in the medium to find that which one can produce higher PHA that the secondary, treat, uh, the secondary screening mm. and okay. use the, 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 the one that give the highest mm. for this study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's still uh, yours, right? I mean, it's not commercial product. No, no. So because, yeah, yeah, so because people really wondering and and how and then what is the isolate and then how can we can get the isolate is that really uh, useful for the implementation so still in a laboratory scale right Dr. Piara yeah so Dr. Sudarmo how about in, from your experience uh, thank you very much that's an uh, interesting question so what we uh, remember about the environmental biotechnology compared with the uh, uh, for example for the uh, food biotechnology on the for the um, med, uh, biomedicine technology. Yeah? Uh, in the environmental biotechnology, uh, uh, the system is open. Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, with water come from the domestic or come from the uh, industry always open so we cannot uh, uh, close the wastewater treatment by bag or reactor mm -hmm. the bacteria or microorganism can uh, uh, insist uh, um, uh, everywhere that's why the in the environmental biotechnology the the system is open but in the medicine uh, biotechnology or for the food biotechnology we can uh, close the system uh, that's why, uh, uh, yeah, we, we know that uh, sometimes we should uh, take the sample uh, uh, bacteria and then the uh, inoculate and etc. and etc. But for the uh, uh, field application and also for the the uh, big amount of the bacteria, what we can do is just as, uh, take a sample from the uh, location that we assume contain the bacteria and then put in the in the in the, 
and the reactor. And the important is uh, about the uh, operation condition, like pH, like uh, temperature, like um, uh, uh, oxygen uh, dissolve. So, uh, so we what uh, that what we uh, should control. So th this is a little bit different with the biotechnology mm -hmm. between environmental biotechnology mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, food biotechnology, also for the uh, medicine biotechnology. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, like it's. I mean, it's a uh, our take home. Right, it's like microbiology should find what is the the good the good uh, possibility for which one is isolation is good for the treatment. So it's like it's long, long, long the homework. Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, for Fitri, uh, do you want to asking directly? Oh, there's no response. So I would like to ask him, uh, yeah. in reality, industrial wastewater is often a pollution for the environment, especially in the sea. How land enforcement related to the improvement of the, sorry, yeah, the industry wastewater treatment system as a basis for environmental protection. Yeah, she's asking about the law enforcement. Uh, These related, are the top results related to the improvement of industrial wastewater. So, so <laughs> who will answer this question? I mean, maybe the policy is different uh, in Indonesia and in, in Thailand. So, Dr. Sudan Moha, what about your opinion about this one? Law enforcement. Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, well, uh, uh, this is also a difficult question, but uh, based on my experience, uh, uh, the uh, how to how to uh, say that? I mean, my dissertation is about the uh, anomal process, but anomal process. Uh, for the uh, wastewater treat, wastewater, wastewater uh, in the high salinity, yeah, in high salinity. So, um, uh, yeah, of course, the bacteria are difficult to uh, to 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 adapt to life in the high salinity. So, for the uh, low, low, but. Uh, 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 with water, it's. Um, I mean, uh, 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 effectivity for the effectivity for the bacteria to reduce the pollutant in the with, uh, in the sea in the sea water is uh, more difficult. So it's better it it's better when the uh, the uh, how to call it the uh, limitation for the uh, 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 sea water is uh, lower than lower than the fresh water. And then, Doctor Piarat, how about your experience is is involving with the law enforcement? Is is wrong? Is it? Yeah. Uh, sorry, still unmute, Doctor Piarat. Yep. Uh, in in Thailand, I think is mm. the, if the big company, uh, the uh, they try to uh, apply the I'm not sure that you know about the clean technology or minimize process. So, uh, the wastewater, the amount of wastewater, uh, is less than in the past. So, uh, most of the big company, uh, right now they focus on the how to produce the bio products from the waste or wastewater in, in, instead of the improvement of the process because I think they already uh, have, what's it called, is already follow the regulation in Thailand already. So they try to you know, find the uh, value add from the waste or wastewater instead of the improve of the system. 
but for the small company or the medium company, um, is is what's it called that the government have to convince them to follow and try to uh uh but uh follow the regulation instead of the improve the the system something like that i don't know how to say but but mostly if the big company is already uh following the regulation is not any pollutants in in the river or in the sea anymore something like that it's quite uh, challenging it's if we have to front with the law enforcement thank you very much for the answer dr piara and dr sudarmo and then uh, i also received uh, the question from dr ivika mansur would you like to ask him directly to the speaker uh, do you tune in dr ivika Oh no. Hello. Yeah. Dr. Irdika Mansur. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so maybe for the next question. Uh, is, uh, okay. Um, so is any question? Still no. Riva, Riva. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bapak. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. I have trouble to unmute my mic. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the impressive uh, presentation. I just would like to ask if there is any implementation of uh, constructed wetland to treat the wastewater, uh, industrial wastewater, or domestic wastewater in Indonesia and Thailand. And and what is the 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 challenge for that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ritika Mansur. So we start from Dr. Piara, please. Yeah. The recent application. Yes, is there any application? Yeah. You, you mean a wetland? Yes, that's right. The, the, um, not all the industry apply for the wetland. Um, <clears throat> mostly it's like yeah, the last pond for remove the nitrogen and such as the seafood industry. So uh, they still apply for the wetland, but the others, um, I'm not sure either. Um, so I'm not sure the question. I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not clear the your question. But what is about uh, oh, what okay. wet, wet land? Uh, that's right. So uh, Dr. Sudarno has uh, mentioned earlier in his presentation that uh, uh, one of the possibility to treat uh, wastewater is by uh, constructed wetland. And I'm actually also interested in this area. And I've done this, uh, I'm actually I'm, I'm doing that at the moment for treating the uh, acid mine drainage from the mining uh, using the wetland. And it is working perfectly. And I, saw, uh, I have been visited uh, Putrajaya in Malaysia that uh, they use also wetland uh, constructed well, a huge one uh, to treat the wastewater. So I wonder if uh, in Indonesia it has been applied as well as in Thailand. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for yeah. Um, uh, actually, in Indonesia, is no uh, many uh, constructed wetland already applied, yeah, but in the, the other names, we uh, sometimes we call is like uh, 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 sanita, taman sanita, or something like that. But the principle actually this is the constructed wetlands, but in the only in the small uh, 
small uh, small area and as as, uh, as long as i know uh, uh, many uh, hospital many hospital also many uh, hotels are used uh, small uh, constructed wetland uh, for the nitrogen uh, 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 treatment after the uh, after after the septic tank or after the uh, uh, domestic wastewater treatment. Okay. And the, thank you. Uh, the challenging is about yeah uh, about uh, <coughs> many study uh, uh, focus on the type of the plan we can apply it in this uh, uh, constructed building. Yes, thank you, Dr. Sudarma. And about uh, in Thailand, Dr. Piarat, about the uh, constructed wetland, is there any recent implementation about that in Thailand? Uh, actually, it's not um, like I told you that uh, it's mostly is for the nitrogen removal. Mm -hmm. So mostly is uh, for the industry that have high nitrogen, such as the seafood, something like that. That apply for the wetland that as the last pond, yeah. So in industrial scale, I mean in industrial place, yeah, the constructed wetland is applied mostly in industrial. Not not all. Some mm -hmm. some like some. a sea like seafood that has mm -hmm. high nitrogen mm -hmm. content, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So maybe all the question is already delivered to the uh, speaker and thank you very much for all the questions, the audience, and then um, and thank you Dr. Tiarat and Dr. Sudarmo for the answer and we apologize. Uh, we could not deliver all the questions to the speaker due to the time limit we have, so it's already past 10 minutes. And shortly we will end our discussion today and I'm trying to make a short uh, summary from uh, this discussion. And a successful implementation of the zero waste uh, or elimination into, into the uh, greenhouse uh, gas house emission will eliminate all the discharges to the land, water, or air that may be a threat to the environment and human life. And industry, the goal of the zero waste will be accomplished with <coughs> the aid of industrial symbiosis and the implementation of the new technology. Maybe uh, you want to say something for the close statement, Dr. Piarat and Dr. Sudama. I hope you will uh, give a close something to uh, say. Yes, Mr. Piarat. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so, so once please give a big applause to our speakers today and yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for the attention from all the participants. And personally, I would like to apologize for inappropriate response during the session. And hopefully, our discussion will give a beneficial for us. And good afternoon, everyone. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And time will be back to Miss Stephanie, please. Thank you, Dawan. That was very fruitful and under outstanding discussion and also presentation. And the last session of our event today. Before we close this event, we want to thank to rector, the speakers for our presentation, organizing comedy, and especially all participants for the enthusiasm in contributing in to our webinar. I apologize for any mistakes during the event. Once again, thank you for watching and we will see you in other webinar series organized by Integrated Science Department. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's give applause and reaction to all of you. Thank you. Thank you all. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Bu, Pak Sudah. Bapak Thank Sudah you. terima kasih Dr. Piara. Thank you very much. I hope we can have any call of yeah. Thank you Dr. Piara.
Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu semuanya yang sudah berkenan untuk mengikuti webinar kami. Mohon izin lift dulu. Ya, terima kasih Pak Dan. Sumpah piarat ngomong. Mari kita. J. Bapak Ibu jangan lupa untuk mengisi linknya. Bapak Ibu jangan lupa untuk mengisi linknya supaya bisa di ini. Linknya itu loh. Linknya. Hmm. Enggak, oh. Enggak. Enggak di... Ya, linknya sudah di-share, kami share. Uh, untuk materi PPT-nya kami share di web kami.unes.acid. Kok jadi bertahan, Pak? Bapak Ibu mohon izin untuk mematikan um, mengakhiri seminar kita pada siang hari ini. Semoga apa yang sudah disampaikan oleh pemateri bisa bermanfaat untuk kita semua. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu sudah ikut join.